morning. This is Kelo Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Sioux Falls police need your help finding the people who fired guns in a neighborhood in the southwest part of the city. Surveillance video captured the sounds of gunshots like this one sent to us from a viewer. Take a listen. Police say there were no reports of injuries or damage. The gunshots were heard around 9.30 Sunday evening. Surveillance video also captured vehicles driving by. If you have any information about the gunfire, you're asked to call Sioux Falls Police. An escaped herd of cattle caused tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage to several vehicles. The Brookings County Sheriff's Office says nearly 100 cattle got out of a pen Saturday morning. The animals walked onto nearby roads and Interstate 29. Altogether, six vehicles crashed into the cattle, including a Brookings fire truck. The damage to the vehicles adds up to more than $26,000. The total loss of the cattle is about $11,000. South Dakota lawmakers have summoned two people who were present at the meeting between Governor Kristi Noem, her daughter Cassidy Peters, and state employees who were overseeing Peters' application for a real estate appraiser license. The Government Action Operations and Audit Committee requested the Secretary of Labor and the former director of the state's appraiser certification program to appear at a meeting next week. While it was not clear what will be asked, the move shows lawmakers want more answers. Temps are cooling across Kelloland. Let's see if that could bring some moisture with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We are looking at cooler temperatures as we do go through the day today, especially in the western South Dakota. Numbers have already been hit for high temperatures of the day. So look for a steady or slowly falling number across western South Dakota. While eastern Kelloland looks like we'll have our temperatures in the 70s. With numbers in the low to middle 70s expected across the southeast from near Brookings, the Marshall, and to the south. And we'll also have to watch that rain or snow that will develop across western South Dakota today and even some thunderstorms in the southeast. Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. General Colin Powell died from complications of COVID-19 Monday, according to his family. Former U.S. Secretary of State's family said in a Facebook post that he was fully vaccinated. The 84-year-old battled underlying conditions, including Parkinson's and a form of cancer. Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken met Powell during a Zoom leadership program for mayors last summer in the middle of the pandemic. He says Powell told them to find their resolve and to stay encouraged. Absolutely. And, and the reason I think um, he had an impact on me, specifically in that session, but even before I had met him in that session, was just the fact that he's just a true statesman. I mean, when you talk about a dying breed of, of quote, politicians, Colin Powell was a bridge builder. You know, he was a unifier. With us today. Ten Hagen says Powell had a commanding and calming presence and seemed much younger than his 84 years. Hunters from across the country made their way to South Dakota for a great weekend to hit the field and kick off pheasant season. However, Game Fish and Parks says there's more to do than just hunt when visiting South Dakota this time of year. The walleye bite has been absolutely awesome across the state. You can catch them early in the mornings. You can catch them at sunset. Um, for a lot of those hunters, don't forget to bring your fishing poles. There, you can go out and have a great time, whether that's, whether that's how you start your day or whether you rest your legs at the end of the day. Um, that's, that's a great way to just make your trip even more memorable. You can also check out the numerous state parks and all the camping opportunities that those provide. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, weather headlines here. Winter weather advisory tonight and tomorrow for the, well, at least the Black Hills of Western South Dakota. Now, at this time, that does not include Rapid City, but there could be additional headlines a little farther east. We're still evaluating that as uh, we look at uh, the latest parameters on snow. You can see here on Futurecast at least that potential for some accumulation from northwest Nebraska into Pine Ridge and possibly over to White River and maybe up to Kadoka. So uh, if you're watching us in those areas, just kind of keep that in mind that a coating of heavy wet snow is a possibility given these temperatures being a little colder tonight. East River, well, no snow accumulations, but there may be a few snowflakes mixed in with this moisture. Look at this widespread half inch.
to almost one inch totals. So wet weather for the farmers, but uh, it will be added into the drought monitor. And of course, uh, we're still getting that all figured out here this month as October has been fairly wet. Here we go. Future cast update today in the 70s for Sioux Falls. That south wind does the trick there. Rapid City, just the opposite. North wind strong, 20 to 45. In between, we sandwich Pier and Aberdeen. Falling numbers in Aberdeen in the north, I think pretty likely this afternoon with the clouds thicker there. Here comes the rain snow in the southwest. Also, notice this. Storms firing after midnight. Sioux Falls could be kind of a loud wake up call there early Wednesday morning with thunder and lightning. There could be some hail mixed in too. And then that snow in the west that's going to continue off and on for Pier and Chamberlain tomorrow, at least late morning into the afternoon. And of course, then it's cooler. The seven day forecast yet to come here. 50 today, Rapid City, your Kettle Land Live Doppler HD forecast. And those 50s for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fall weather, 30s at night. Yeah, it looks like more frost freeze type weather pretty likely. Aberdeen also looking at 20s here for Thursday morning, Friday morning. So, yep, it looks like if things cooperate there, we'll have a hard freeze in the northeast. I think Pier also will be quite chilly here, 32 by Thursday morning after that rain tomorrow and maybe a few snowflakes mixed in. Rapid City, good chance of precipitation developing tonight and tomorrow. Rain mixed with snow and then 50s and 60s to head into the weekend. Find out more coverage online at kettleland.com and have yourself a great day.